Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now as we're only but a couple of weeks away from heading to Mexico for Forza Horizon 5, I thought it would be nice to reflect on our time with Forza Horizon 4, so today we're going to be taking a trip to the past uh, and going over Forza Horizon 4 which has been out for just over three years now. So we're going to be taking into what we as a community loved about the game and also having a look at some of the things that we didn't love so much. Now at the heart of a game like this of course is the cars. They really are a massive part of why we love to play games like this. Of course the map is a big part of the equation too but for a lot of us car nuts the key is always in the driving and the cars. Now Forza Horizon 4 offered up over 750 vehicles for us to drive in the end and whilst there was a broad range of cars in Horizon spanning from the plainly ridiculous PLP 50 to the outright ludicrous Hoonicorn there was always a car for someone and while 750 cars does sound great and don't get me wrong it was sometimes i think people yearned for a few more everyday cars instead of another mental hypercar which would be added each month and even the addition of some of the manufacturers that we've lost along the way such as rolls royce or saab which have been in previous games but unfortunately weren't in horizon 4 so it would have been great to have some of them added back in but on a whole, let's be honest, it's a bit hard to complain when you've got so many different cars at your disposal in such a massive game like this. So in that aspect, I think it was absolutely fantastic. Now, what was a nice touch as well is that obviously each car came with its own set of perks. So some of them you get more XP points for performing certain skills such as a drift app, whilst others would offer up anything from 100 to 300,000 credits to even a special Forza Edition car, which was one of the first videos I did in this game. And there was quite a few of them, which again was a really, really nice touch to see. Now whilst we're talking about cars, of course we've got to touch on customization and tuning of them. So when it came to this aspect, Horizon 4 did offer up a great selection of things such as engine upgrades and tuning upgrades and things that you could do in that aspect, such as tweaking the suspension um, and all sorts of bits like that. Let's be honest, there was a good variety as well as things like wheel styles um, and there was some nice body kits including wide body kit man from manufacturers such as RWB and Liberty Walk. But a lot of it seemed like people were still wanting more on this front to bring it almost on par with the upgrade options you would see in a Need for Speed game, for instance, um, which does seem to be something that the guys at Playground Games have addressed when it comes to Forza Horizon 4, uh, 5, sorry, which is great to see. And whilst what we had in Horizon 4 was great, you know, it would have still been nice to have seen a few more body kit options added, um, you know, bumpers or even wide bodies would have been really nice to have seen now we're going to move on to something that of course was a beating heart of a game like this which was the map so it's something that plays a massive part in a racing game like this especially an open world one within the horizon series where it seems obviously that turn 10 and playground games are constantly looking to expand on when it comes to each horizon game and horizon 4 in this aspect was no different now heading to the, K the UK was a great choice and I'm not just sort of saying that because I live here um, but because there's so much variety over here whether people know about it or not you know there's really nice little towns there's massive cities and there are some fantastic driving roads in the UK and the, develop the developers here managed to incorporate a lot of the above uh, into a really really good fun and diverse map. Of course it might not have been you know to everyone's taste it might not have been everyone's favorite map as it doesn't always carry that exotic feel uh, for instance that horizon 3 carried with australia but it did bring in a lot of great scenic places uh, and a lot of nostalgia for some of us with brilliant locations such as edinburgh uh, parts of the lake district as well such as Derwent water and ambleside and it made for a very very gorgeous map and it was quite fun not to mention though, if that wasn't enough, you could always have purchased one of the DLCs. So the first one there was Fortune Island, which gave everyone a new map with some fantastic mountain roads, which I know a lot of people were screaming for, especially when they wanted to do their drift runs. Um, and also it brought some really cool weather effects, like really epic thunderstorms and some amazing nighttime skies for those people who really enjoyed taking the photos uh, and taking the scenic route when they wanted to slow things down and they'd had enough of racing. 
On top of that we did get the LEGO Speed Champions DLC which came with a new map which was the LEGO Speed Valley and if I'm brutally honest I actually enjoyed this DLC more than I thought it was. It was a fun addition to, to such a game like Horizon 4 and it did keep me entertained for quite a while but I know that for some this expansion didn't hit the mark as a lot of people were hoping for an expansion of the main Great Britain map. So a lot of people had picked up that at the north, just above Edinburgh, uh, there was a massive bridge there which we all thought was going to lead to a new part of the UK or a new DLC map, but unfortunately it never did, which was a little bit disappointing. Um, and, the, and the DLCs here sort of left a little to be desired, so hopefully Horizon 5 brings something a lot bigger there. Now, as we touched on earlier with the weather in Fortune Island DLC, Horizon 4 had also brought in a new season system, which would change every week. Now, when this was originally announced, of course, everyone was very excited. Uh, this was one of the new biggest additions to the Horizon series, and it brought a whole new element of gameplay, uh, especially when you would get into the winter season. Now, whilst, whilst I sort of thoroughly enjoyed this addition, it would seem that not everyone else would. So whilst three of the seasons were a blast, summer, autumn and spring, there was one season that everyone didn't really seem to like, which was of course the winter season. Now this brought a new challenge when it came to gameplay, so not every car was able to hack this snowy environment. Um, and a lot of players were put off, off by this, you know, you had to tune a lot of cars with snow tyres um, and you could only really use the grippier ones when it came to the races. So not too many people were happy with this aspect. In fact, from what I could see across the Facebook groups, a lot of people would prefer to just leave that week out and wouldn't really touch the game, which of course is not something that we like to hear. Luckily though, what it seems to have been is the guys at Playground Games have of course heard everyone's cries and when moving to Mexico the winter season will bring a lot less snow uh, except for when you're sort of on the higher peaks of the map which is great to hear and I'm sure that a lot of people are very keen to hear that news. Now other new features that were brought into Horizon 4 were of course the addition of the Forzathon live events which allowed you to do challenges as a group with friends or randomers uh, and hit a group score such as in a drift zone or a danger sign and do about three challenges to at the end of it earn Forzathon points which of course could be used in the Forzathon shop to purchase outfits and cars uh, and this was a great addition as well but I think over time people probably got a little less interested in this but again this looks like something else the guys at Playground Games have tweaked uh, for Horizon 5 so they're bringing in new challenges such as pinata popping uh, and that looks to be a lot more fun so hopefully that's got a nice revamp in Horizon 5. Now on top of this they added in the Eliminator game mode which you can sort of think of as a PUBG of the racing world. So you'd have about 60 people starting off in the same car which was of course a Mini Cooper and you would all race to stay in the game upgrading your cars to faster ones as you went along with the additional challenge of having the map size reducing every few minutes. So again this was another great addition to the Horizon 4 game. Uh, which really kept things alive for players and of course this will be returning in Horizon 5 with a little bit of a revamp as well which is always great to hear because that did keep a lot of us entertained for a long time. Now another key feature of a game like this is of course the racing gameplay and the events and in Horizon 4 there was quite a lot on offer and some of them had of course been tweaked from Horizon 3. So we still had your standard road races and off road and dirt ones as well as across country and street scenes and of course you've got the drag strips in Horizon 4. Now whilst, whilst the core gameplay surrounding these was pretty spot on the only thing that let us down a bit was the off-road and dirt races. The reason for this was they're meant to be 100% sort of off-road based, but it seemed that a lot of the dirt tracks weren't. They did have quite a bit of tarmac in them, so they didn't feel like they were fully off-road sort of rally stages, if you will, which was a, di a bit disappointing. But this is also something that seems to be changing in Horizon 5. Now on top of that you've got the street scene races which brought a whole new sort of level of difficulty uh, as you've got the additional challenge of having to avoid AI traffic uh, as these aren't closed circuit races so that was also a brilliant sort of racing mode if you're bored of just track racing and you wanted that extra challenge uh, added in there. 
On top of that, showcase events continued across Horizon 4, which of course started off in the first Horizon, and these are always great fun. So in Horizon 4, you would go from racing a hovercraft to dirt bikes to the Flying Scotsman and even a Vulcan fighter jet, which was brilliant. And let's be honest, showcase events <clears throat> are always the spectacle of the show sort of thing. They're always brilliant, especially for us photographers as well. And on top of this, you had a whole host of Horizon stories, which again brought loads of different challenges. So you'd go from Aisha's taxis, where you were racing across the map in a souped up London taxi, to the Top Gear story which included brand new cars that were taking some of them straight out of the Top Gear challenges, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are massive fans of Top Gear, so this was also brilliant fun. Now whilst these stories may not have created the most memorable of characters, they were still a great way of showing off the map in so many different scenarios uh, and they added a whole new level to the game which wasn't just racing around against AI on closed circuit races, so they were good fun. On top of this, each new week would bring a new set of challenges that were added in for the weekly playlist events. So this, you know, this kept things feeling fresh and alive and it showed that the developers did care and they hadn't just left the game as some developers do. Uh, they were quite involved playground games, which was great. And they would often add in brand new cars each month in these festival playlists, which was absolutely fantastic. And I have to give credit to Playground Games for doing that, as it did keep the game feeling alive. Now overall, let's be honest, in my opinion, the Horizon 4 experience was brilliant. Yeah, it had some issues and it seemed a little lacking in certain departments, but there is no denying in the departments where it excels, it more than makes up for this, and I think it's probably one of the best open world racing games on the market at the moment, and as far as I'm concerned, the Horizon series remains to be one of the best racing game series available to date. Now, Horizon 5 looks to be expanding it in so many areas, uh, and I'm sure it'll be a brilliant addition to the Horizon series, and like you guys, I'm sure, I cannot wait to get stuck in, and I'm super excited for it. But at the end of this, what I want to know is your opinions on Horizon 4. So what did you love about it? What did you not like so much? Just let me know down below in the comments because I'm always intrigued to hear your opinions. Lastly, I'd like to say a massive thank you and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, dropping a like will massively help me out. And also, if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so as of course I will be bringing out tons of Forza Horizon 5 content in the near future. And if you haven't already, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and jump into our Discord as well. Links are down below. Apart from that, folks, I want to wish you all the best. Make sure you all stay safe and take care.